Now, the Monetary Policy Committee MPC could bite the bullet next week when it reconvenes and adjusts the policy rate for the first time since September 2020. As with surging inflation concerns and interest rate hike across the world, put Nigeria in a difficult position. According to the Consumer Price Index for April released by the National Bureau of Statistics, the headline inflation rate has climbed to 16.8%, the highest in eight months. Now, the soaring inflation rate driven by fuel price increases and accelerating costs for food, including bread and cereals, rose to 18.4% from 17.2% in March. The jump in fuel and food items is driven by global supply disruptions following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, analysts have equally pointed out. Now, the state of the economy in the wake of high inflation and aviation fuel hike is our focus for today. Welcome to Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. <music> Aside from the rise in inflation in the country, here is a highlight of other stories which made headlines in business Nigeria this week. The umbrella body of local carriers, Airline Operators of Nigeria, AON, said biting aviation fuel scarcity would trigger disruptions to scheduled travels, resulting in rescheduling, delays, and cancellations. The association and its members are working and in alliance with product marketers, government, and relevant stakeholders to ensure availability and proper pricing of aviation fuel. The operators also promise to do all that is necessary and within their powers to restore normal flight shuttles as soon as possible. The Nigerian Port Authority, NPA, says it is dissatisfied with the operations of the barge operators operating on the nation's inland waterways. In an interactive session with journalists, the authority's managing director, Mohamed Belokoko, said NPA will be introducing new requirements for the shipping service providers, saying those who fail to meet the new requirements may have their licenses revoked. Belokoko said the authority had noticed some of the barges sinking, containers falling off at birth, some bruising versus discharging at birth, a development he said was not acceptable. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission has clarified that reviews do not automatically translate into an increase in electricity tariffs. The Electricity Market Regulator made this known in a statement titled Notice of Compliance in Respect of the Biannual Review of the Revenue Requirement of Licenses Published. According to the NERC, where the impact of improved efficiency in operating parameters for individual licenses exceeded the impact of changes in macroeconomic parameters, end users might be reduced as exhibited in some tariff classes under the multi-year tariff order MYTO 2022. The clarification came following backlashes that greeted recent reports of an increase in tariffs by the electricity distribution companies Discos. The Nigeria Customs Service has concluded plans to redeploy the suspended electronic valuation policy for imported vehicles. The policy, also known as Vehicle Inspection Number, has been generating controversy since its introduction some months back. Clearing agents and other maritime stakeholders at staged protests in the wake of the introduction of the evaluation policy, a development that forced the government to suspend its implementation. Among other things, clearing agents claim that the evaluation system came with a sharp increase in duty paid on imported vehicles. Welcome back. Now, food inflation rose to 18.37% in the review month, an increase compared to 17.2% recorded in the preceding month. Now, this rise in the food index was caused by increases in the prices of bread and cereals, food products, potatoes, yam and other tubers, wine, fish, meat and oils. Also, domestic airlines under the aegis of the airline operators of Nigeria are saying that rising operational costs occasioned by aviation fuel price hikes, foreign exchange shortage, among others, may push the base economy flight ticket to 100,000 naira. 
Now, financial analyst Shagun Shogbito joins us now to make some sense out of all of this. Thank you, Shagun, for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me, Jocelyn. Always a pleasure. All right, Shago, what do we have in our hands, uh, this increase uh, in inflation rate, uh, the highest in eight months? Uh, what do we see happening in the next coming weeks and months? Um, unfortunately, for the, for the foreseeable future and going into the next uh, few months, um, probably heading towards the end of the year, the direction of inflation is likely to be upwards. And um, this is because there are, there are a number of factors that will be driving inflation. Um, uh, cost push side, as well as money supply side. Um, so for, for the, what, what has happened, what has driven us to this point so far, has almost singularly been, I say almost because it's not just that, but it, that's a major part of it. Um, it's, it's the crisis uh, you know, between Russia and uh, Ukraine. Um, and as you have already said, and the disruption to the supply uh, supply chain, um, supply and logistic chain um, across the world, uh, the delays in supply that this, and therefore which create supply gaps that will drive prices upwards. This is not going to go away anytime soon from if we're to read from what has been happening you know, between Russia and Ukraine and the direction that that crisis seems to be heading. If anything, it looks as if we're in this for the long haul. Um, so now, bearing in mind that Russia and Ukraine are two of the largest suppliers of some of the basic grain that a lot of the world depends on, um, it is not surprising that you've seen food prices really, really escalating. And you know, it's, it's also important to say that this is not just a Nigeria thing. Inflation is at the highest level in 40 years in the UK and um, the highest in a very, the, you know, the highest in a very long time, even in the US. Uh, because the, the entire world relies on that advice for, for a lot of the components of our food, food basket. Um, and then when you combine that with the fact that in Nigeria, we are currently heading into the political electioneering campaign season where we're going to see a lot of money flowing around, you know, in the system, um, where there's going to be a lot of services being purchased by these politicians and a lot of demand for um, some basic services, printing services, um, uh, food, you know, um, logistic services will be in high demand. Prices will also go up. So it looks as if, you know, this is when May now, this inflation report is for the month of April. Uh, by the time you get the inflation report for the month of May um, uh, and June and July, the impact of Ukraine and Russia will still be there. And then as you head towards the end of the year, regardless of what happens with Russia and Ukraine, the political um, electioneering uh, issue factor will then kick in. So... Um, the, the bad news is prices are going to keep going up, unfortunately. All right, uh, Shago, the Monetary Policy Committee should be meeting sometime next week. What do you see uh, happening uh, in terms of um, uh, the MPR? Do you think it will actually be increased just like interest rates? Unfortunately, I don't think they will increase. I don't think they have the courage. <laughs> I don't think they have the courage to take that decision. It's a difficult decision. Uh, because, um, you know, the, the basic, the fundamentals behind the NPR is if you increase the NPR, uh, you are going to stifle money supply, which will stifle access to credit, which will stifle growth. Now, we have gotten to a point since we emerged from the most recent recession where we can say that the economy is beginning to grow. Where, you know, so we had some very high, um, well, relatively high levels of growth um, uh, last quarter, I think the uh, Q, Q2, Q3 last year and Q4. But by Q4, what we were seeing in the growth numbers 
were, in my view, more reflective of the reality, which is that, yes, the economy is growing, but it's not, it hasn't been growing as fast as the Q2 and Q3 numbers would have indicated. Um, so now, that growth that we're beginning to see, that is still modest, um, the fear of the central bank and the monetary policy committee will be that if they increase the NPR, that growth might be killed off. And we may either slip back into recession or that the growth will be stifled significantly. So I don't think they're going to do anything. I think they're going to hold. Um, but, you know, for me, I think that if you want to strike a good balance between growth and inflation, knowing that the damage that inflation itself can also do, even to the prospect of growth, um, right now I would advise, you know, the Monetary Policy Committee um, to actually increase, increase NPR maybe slightly, just to try and temper the effect of inflation uh, in the system. But if you don't, then you continue to see a situation where um, the disposable income of Nigerians is going to keep getting eroded. And of course, where disposable income is getting eroded, then capacity to spend is reducing, which will then affect the manufacturing and productive sector. And therefore, you will still push them into, into a, a, a lack of growth anyway. So, <laughs> so it's almost a part 22. If mm. you increase uh, NPR, the stifle growth. If you don't increase uh, NPR, inflation will help you stifle growth. So it's a difficult decision, but I would say increase it. All right. It is uh, actually a dicey one for the MPC, that is. But let's talk about the implication of all of this now, the volatility of um, price on essential commodities. What would it really tell or translate to the uh, household real income and, of course, um, expenditure at this particular time? Sorry, I didn't get your question. Looking at the price volatility of essential commodities over time with all that is going on in Russia and indeed the world, what, does, what would it really translate to the household real income and expenditure? Yes, so, you know, so the way, the way you know, to, to the average man on the street, to the average Nigerian, when you talk about inflation, you know, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, statistical, it's a, it's a monetary, uh, policy statistic. Uh, it's, it's a, let me call it a policy statistic. You're just trying to track what is happening with prices and all that, and then that will guide decision making of the policy makers and what have you. But to the average man on the street, inflation is simply about how much the money in his pocket can buy per time. And what we have experienced in the last year has been uh, nothing short of catastrophic, you know, to the average man on the street. So when you talk about their disposable income, uh, family income, expenditure, capacity to, to, to spend money, um, majority of the items that the average family survives on, majority, if not all, have either doubled in price or are approaching double the price that they were a year ago. I mean, so you can pick any item. Is it bread you want to talk about? These are basic things that people eat every day. Is it bread? Is it dairy? You know, is it rice? Um, um, uh, milk? Eggs? You know, just a year ago, you were buying one single egg at 30 naira, 40 naira. You know, then it became 50. Now it's 100 naira. Egg, one egg, 100 naira. <laughs> you know, so it, it's, it's, it's getting to a point where we may be approaching a breaking point where in a, you hit inelasticity, you know, of the consumer and of their capacity and something might just break. You know, I hope we will not get to a point where you have bread riots. I don't know. You know, Nigerians are not very famous for that. We didn't have riot. bread riots in Nigeria. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> especially given the recent experiences we have had with protests and all that. But, okay. you know, you never can say if things get really bad, people might hit the streets. Because it's, it's getting really difficult for people to survive. Mm. All right, Sergo, before we leave uh, this issue of um, commodity, let's talk about the energy sector internationally now. You know, the price of um, crude and translate it down to the nation's economy. How do we play in all of this in the next couple of months? 
In which in which aspect? Did you e say? Energy oil. Yeah. Ah, good. So that presents another. Um, uh, how would you put it? Um, um, paradox. You know, because here we are as an oil producing nation um, that should be benefiting from the recent increase in um, the international price of crude. But instead, what we are witnessing is, first of all, because of this increase in the international price of crude, driven by the instability created by Russia and Ukraine again, um, the price the price of um, a refined petroleum product have either gone up for the ones that are not regulated or the subsidy we're paying has increased for the ones that are regulated as PMS. Right? So avi aviation uh, uh, jet fuel has gone up. Diesel has doubled. Aviation jet fuel also doubled. You know, so if you say, oh, aviation jet fuel is used by the rich uh, and all that, but you know what? There's a trickle down effect because the people that are using these services also provide services to the people that you make, not all rich. So if, you know, they are paying double what they used to pay for airfare now, they're going to transfer those costs somehow to the consumer. And, you know, the same for people that use diesel to power their factories and all of that. So meanwhile, the benefits of the increase in the price of crude internationally that should accrue to the country because of our stained uh, mono, mono, mono product uh, base for the economy, we're not getting that benefit. Our um, um, forest reserves have not increased. The government revenues, we are not seeing any increase. We're not seeing increase in FAC allocation, for example. So you begin to wonder, where is this money? What exactly is going on? On the one hand, we're suffering an increase in prices. We're suffering inflation because oil prices have gone up. On the other hand, revenues are not going up. So there's some sort of very strange economics going on right now All in right. this country that somebody needs to explain to to to, <laughs> to the average Nigerian, you know. So it's 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 all a very strange situation we find ourselves. Uh, and for me, you can only put it down at the doorsteps of a of a policy failure. All right. A failure in governance. All right, Shagu, just before we just uh, leave off from this um, conversation, let's talk about uh, one thing that you mentioned in passing, which is the aviation um, sector. And uh, from what we hear, operators are actually saying that um, it may get to as well as um, uh, passengers paying 100,000 naira for domestic flight. How did we get here? What can we do to just uh, swim out of these troubled waters? Well, I mean, very clearly... Um, like a lot of the other sectors of the Nigerian economy, um, there's a lot of imbalance um, within within the aviation sector. Uh, but obviously, the, the, the fundamental um, um, driving factor for this increase in the cost of um, of, of airfare is, is the price of their, you know one of their most fundamental inputs, which is the, the, to fuel the, 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 the planes um, themselves. You know, so um, with this in with this continued increases, the airlines, who in any case have been a, a, a sector that has struggled traditionally in this country, the, the aviation sector has never really been stable. And you can look at the very checkered history over the last twenty, maybe twenty five years, and you find that attrition rate is very high. Um, if you if you take a stock of the uh, airlines we had. You know, in, let's say 1999, and take a stock of the airlines we have now. Very, very few have survived. Very few. Majority of the airlines you have today are new. You know, so I, I, I guess because this is a TV show, I don't want to mention specific brands, but you look at those airlines that you had, almost none exist today, with the exception of the few. You know, so this is a sector that has struggled with a lot of um, um, internal. Um, uh, uh, structural problems within that sector, you know, uh, lack of transparency, lack of capacity, uh, lack of adequate funding, lack of um, um, availability of revenue, the market, because the, 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 the fundamentals within the economy do not encourage, uh, you know, the flying habit. It's not something that is available to the majority of the people. So this sector is already struggling from these things. They're not making enough money. Most of them run in losses. And then, you now add this new 
uh, variable of the cost of their primary input doubling and almost you know approaching the point of where it might even triple. You know, uh, the, 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 the signs are very clear. It's either they go under or they increase their FF. So the price for now is probably going to go go higher and get worse, and uh, only the high party will probably be able to afford it. Uh, right. Just suppose that with the current situation in the country, then you begin to wonder what impact this will have on the economy. All right. So maybe the only bright, the only lining in the air might be the fact that, well, the, the remote work culture uh, has been enhanced significantly as a result of the recent lockdowns, and maybe that will mitigate some of the economic impact of all of this to a certain degree. But, you know, uh, it remains to be seen how, how severely this will right, affect um, the economy. All right, thank you so much, I'm Shagun. We've been speaking with Shagun Shukbita, a financial um, analyst. Thanks for all the thoughts that you have shared on Business Insights for today. Thank you. Have a great day. You too, Shagun. As we round off, uh, chief executive officers of businesses in Nigeria have been encouraged to engage and commit to growth and sustain innovation in Africa. This came up on the sidelines of CEO's Breakfast Roundtable, hosted by the United Nations Global Impact Network Nigeria in Lagos. We'll bring you details in the next report. But that's the size of the show for this week. I am Justin Akadonye. See you again next time. Although it was a breakfast roundtable for the Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations Global Compact, CEOs from the private sector in Lagos converged in this hall to collaborate on the sustainability of the continent. The United Nations Global Africa Strategy 2021 to 2023 is a proposed roadmap to accelerate corporate sustainability and champions the business sector's contribution to sustainable development in the continent. In this panel session, the narrative of the Sustainable Development Goals takes center stage, including gender equity, decent work and economic growth, and climate action, among others. By adopting sustainability, we were able to bring a very attractive value proposition to the oil and gas sector. Essentially, we halved the cost for logistics support, and we enabled projects which have never been done in Nigeria before to be done in Nigeria. I think that within the business community, there's a very clear understanding that this is not just perhaps the right thing to do, uh, but it is the absolutely commercial thing to do. We believe that empowering women is pivotal to the shared success that we all strive to achieve. Because the role women play in the empowerment of the family, the homes, and even the individuals cannot be wished away. Western coordinator of the United Nations, as well as other top echelon of the Global Compact, throw more light on the essence of the sessions as they affect the private sector and even young people. Opportunities for young people to have to work with companies. So the idea is by giving them exposure to, to working in the private sector, they become more attractive as part of a future labor force. It's more about how can private sector speak as one voice, you know, to and bring all the businesses together, partnerships. It's going to be very important what um, the brilliant um, organizations and bodies here that um, are already delivering on the SDG. We want to unite the Africa and indeed Nigeria private sector to be able to help to work with governments in ensuring that the sustainable development goals have impact. Oh, the take home message is sustainable business is the future. It's no longer business as usual. CEOs now understand that they need to operate responsibly, embed the 10 principles of the UN Global Compact, take actions to promote human rights in their business, ensure decent work in their operations, protect the environment where they're living. The discussion also focused on identifying prevalent barriers and key actions to achieve the ambitions of the Africa strategy. 